go through. It says, it says, and I quote, he's very tall and very good. That's all it says, actually. Yeah. Whoa. Very tall and very good. That's from the British Science Association. Ladies and gentlemen, go on now for the very tall and the very good David McNeil. Let's go. David, as you've already found out, I study analytical chemistry. Ooh, it's not that exciting. Analytical chemistry is what you get when you take um, all the fun, exciting bits of chemistry, the reason you loved it at school, the explosions, the reactions, you take all of that away and you replace it with accountancy. Um, so if you are the kind of person who gets really fired up by spreadsheets, then stop coming to my gigs, Dad. It's getting, it's getting weird. Um, so yeah, we're, we're in Bright Club tonight. Welcome to Bright Club. Uh, has anyone been to any Bright Club events before? Oh, a couple of you. Wow. Um, this is the, the furthest north I've ever been. Uh, no, no, I been. The Bright Club has ever been, I think. Um, aside from that one gig they did in the Arctic Circle with their searches there. Um, but that didn't go very well because the audience never warmed up. That's one of the three jokes you're getting from me tonight, so enjoy it. Um, yeah, break up. Um, I've not been to any of these events before, but I have seen one or two of the performers. And <laughs> oh, she's loving it! Uh, I have seen one or two of the performers before. Um, and and the, the, the jokes you tend to get at these events are, um, there's an awful lot of stuff about homeopaths and sidekicks and other merchants of questionable remedies. Um, and I can't really do any jokes like that, because there's an awful lot of overlap, to be honest, between homeopathy and analytical chemistry. Um, there's, there's some similarities. In both cases, you take something that might be interesting, something that might be medicinal, that might help someone, you dilute it five billion times, no exaggeration, you pretend that what you just did was useful, and then you ask for more money, please. So I... I now have a grudging respect for homeopaths. For one thing, they make more money than I do. And for another, I dilute things all day long. I've never cured anyone's eczema, even by accident. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, who, we, we've got an interesting crowd in tonight. Uh, we've got some, I'm, I'm here for chemistry, we've got some engineers, some computing scientists. Do you have any physicists in? Yeah. One or two, of course. You can't find out if there are any physicists in the room by asking, as, as most of you will know. Um, over 90% of the physicists in the universe are so-called dark physicists <laughs> who are undetectable by any normal means. Dark matter. I think, I think physicists have realised at this stage that they can tell us anything and we'll just accept it. Like they could, they could come out tomorrow and say, actually the universe is made of dragon spunk and fairy farts. And we'd go, yeah, sure, why not? Everything blue travels backwards in time. Cool. <laughs> in any other discipline, you know, if, if the calculation showed that 90%, 90% of the mass of the universe is missing, any other discipline would check the calculations. <laughs> Physics, no. The, cal the, the calculations are correct. The universe is wrong. <laughs> I'm going I'm to stop there. Um, they're a dangerous crowd to annoy. Never antagonize someone who understands ballistics. <laughs> Here's your dark matter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I do analytical chemistry, I do break up now, and um, as you can probably tell from my easygoing, charming stage demeanour, I was actually hoping for more of a laugh there, that was a... I'm, I'm actually quite flattered by the fact I didn't get a laugh, like you're, there's a lot of people sitting in the audience going, easygoing, charming stage demeanour, oh why? Why did I not see that? He's very good, and very tall. Uh, as you can probably tell from my charming, easy-going stage demeanor, um, I have... Hey, ha, 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 ha. Don't overrate it. Um, I have done some scientific communication stuff before, and the previous thing I did um, a couple of weeks ago was this thing called Fame Lab, where you get three minutes to explain any concept in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics. And I did very well at it. I went to the Scottish final, and I won the Scottish final. Incidentally, 
incidentally means, by the way, if you think any of these guys are better than me tonight, you are factually wrong. <laughs> In Scotland, in the year 2012-2013, I am, I am literally the best there is at this. So, I'm just saying I've got a piece of paper that proves it. And, I, and then I went down to, uh, to London for the final in England, where I was thrashed by an engineer. One of your lot. The scandal. And I was really, I was really careful about it because not only did I, did I try really hard and, and it meant a lot to me, but I was also better than the guy that won. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bitter, but I, I basically was. I mean, listen, Sonia was there. Sonia will tell you. Um, she, she was all right. She was pretty good. I think, um, I think the swearing was probably a bit much for them, Sonia. Some of the audience came away actually thinking that the neurotransmitter is called fucking acetylcholine. <laughs> You'll understand when you talk to a laser on. So, yeah, I went down to the final and I got thrashed. And I came away from it thinking, how could I have won that? How could I have done better? And I remember that in the early stages of the competition, um, like my talk was on isotopes, and I had had a, a brilliant visual metaphor for what isotopes are and how they worked. And I, I told this to the, uh, the theme of organizers, and I asked them if I could do this on the stage. And they said, oh, no, 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 it's uh, fire hazard, health and safety, bollocks, bollocks, bollocks. You know, all the usual bullshit they come up with when they don't want a Scot to win. <laughs> English bastards. You're not allowed to show your penis. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best advice anyone has ever given for, for being loved. <laughs> Anyway, so I remember this act that I had, um, this, this visual metaphor that I had, and they didn't let me do. So I thought, what I'll do is, I'll show it to you guys tonight, you can all tell me it's marvellous, and then we can all go back to my place um, later on, if, if, if you like, if you're up for that. Um, so it kind of works like this, it'll take a little bit of setup. Fuck it, it's fine. <laughs> Right, we're still here. How it works is this. Isotopes, right? Two different elements that occupy the same place on the periodic table. Uh, mind fucked, I know, it's incredible. <laughs> um, the way you define, how does that work? The way you define an element is uh, its weight based on the number of subatomic particles that make it up. The number of uh, protons, neutrons, and electrons, for those of you who remember standard grade chemistry. Um, so if two elements, even if they're chemically identical, if they're made up of different particles, then they are different elements. It just works that way. Those are the rules. I'm sorry. Um, so, here is the brilliant visual metaphor. I am Mercury 198. I'm fun. I'm a, the only liquid metal at room temperature. I, uh, I, I get on well with alchemists, but don't breathe me in or methylate me because I'll destroy your brain. <laughs> I react to things. in a, ma a manner characteristic of the element mercury. This is, this lemon just here represents another kind of element, and I, I react to it. Jesus! <laughs> Lemons are meant to be nice! Christ. So I react to things, and I also have a characteristic way of moving around based on my weight and my, uh, my atomic structure. <laughs> See, that was characteristic, right? You could all tell that was me, Mercury 198. What happens if I absorb a neutron? Neutrons, in this case, are played by ice donuts, right? <laughs> it's not perfect, I know. An ice donut weighs around about one tenth of one percent of my weight. Um, a neutron is around about half of one percent of the weight of Mercury 198. So, there's a little bit off, but. Frankly, fuck you, stop being so picky. <laughs> it's a fucking metaphor. What happens if I absorb an extra neutron? <laughs> How do I now react to things? Oh, no. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> oh no, that's it. <laughs> 
the same. I reckon it's in the same way. How do I know? Same. No, no. I was slightly slower. Because, Jesus Christ. Because I put on the extra weight, I was slightly slower in moving on from one thing to the other. That is Mercury 199 to similar for 198. What happens? What happens when I absorb a second, an additional neutron? Slightly, slightly fucking slower. <laughs> not all of you in the audience are chemists. You may not be aware that there are seven fucking stable isotopes in Mercury. <laughs> I've got a whole box of donuts here, this can go on all night. And we can use these isotopes for all sorts of interesting things. For instance, um, some studies, some research has shown that moon rock and earth rock are isotopically identical. This means at some point in the far distant past, we were made of the same material, we came from the same place. That means that when we brought the rocks back to the moon landings, we were bringing them home. <laughs> That or they were both picked up from the same sound stage in the Arizona desert. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.